89.3 The Current. I'm Mary Lucia. You are listening to a Zoom session with Real Estate. That song is called Half a Human. In fact, that's the title of the new EP. And I'm talking to Martin. Martin, how are you? I am doing well. How are you? Are you in a closet? No. <laughs> I'm in a room that is slightly larger than a closet, which kind of acts as my studio. It's kind of like a side den in my house. Yeah. So let's get uh, let's get a little talk about uh, when you guys released uh, last year, when you released the main thing, um, at what point was it during the pre-shutdown, mid, post? Where were you guys at with that release? Uh, when when the record came out, uh, it w- it came out about two weeks before lockdown. So <laughs> pretty much the worst possible time. I guess two weeks after maybe would have been worse because we at least got two weeks of like relative normalcy where, you know, I don't know, people were talking about anything other than COVID um, for the first two weeks when the record was out. But yeah, we ended up canceling a bunch of tour dates and all that kind of stuff, you know, shut down the whole year. And what does that make you feel like? Because I know how much work goes into uh, writing, recording an album that you have big plans for, just like a a little child that you have plans for the future. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, nope. So what adjustments have you been making? Have you been doing a lot of these uh, really natural Zoom interviews? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a big anticlimax. Um, It. Yeah, we have. We, I mean, yeah, it was, it was really upsetting, obviously. Um, I, I mean, you know, everybody was affected in their own ways. And so, uh, we're just dealing with it just like anyone else. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a little frightening, you know, cause we're supposed to be touring and making money and stuff. And you kind of bank <laughs> on the, on, the on years <laughs> cause there's off years and on years and, we we also put a lot of work into this record, so it was it was you know kind of a bummer not to be able to uh, share it in a physical space with people. You know, like it's it's one thing for people to hear it, but it's nice, or it's better than nice. It's like kind of the whole one of the best things about being a musician is getting to go out on the road and play the songs live and kind of have that experience with with people who are kind of nice enough to come <laughs> and enjoy our music. So. Yeah, that whole, it felt like definitely um, it didn't uh, that part didn't happen, which was weird. Um, but yeah, we we did we've been doing a lot of over you know especially you know right after the record came out, we had to do you know promo stuff. So yeah, stuff like this and um, actually like you know like for example, we we may might have ended up coming through your radio station and doing like a live session, and instead of doing stuff like that, we were like doing these remote recorded things where I would record my part and then send it to the band and then they would record their parts and I'd mix it back together on my computer. So we did a bunch of that, which um, ended up being kind of uh, informative and was like, Oh, we can do this type of thing. And that was kind of what gave us the idea to end up finishing those left uh, kind of leftover songs from the main thing, uh, which turned into this EP that we just put out. A lot of the bands that I have talked to um, throughout this last year um, who had a a similar situation to you where they had a finished record ready to go, um, they now listen back to some of the songs and oddly some of the tunes seem prophetic. Have any, have you made that correlation to any of the songs from the real thing? Like, I mean, obviously I don't know what state of mind you were in when you were recording the main thing but it probably wasn't this but a mm-hmm. lot of people a lot of people have said man now i kind of look back and think what what am i nostradamus because i was kind of seeing some st- people wrote about isolation people were writing about this sort of but it takes on a whole new meaning of course sure i mean it's easy I, well i think with anything this like traumatic i you know it's easy to kind of read meaning into things um i do think like I'm sure there are examples of it on the album. Definitely, like my bandmate Alex Bleeker pointed out, one of the the song, actually the song you guys just played, Half a Human, he was like, those lyrics really sound different now. Like he was like, uh, 
there's this line like feeling like half a human in this mess and like i don't know it's like kind of this feeling of like kind of losing your identity i think you know and and i think we all have experienced a little bit of that over the last year so that yeah i mean definitely we we've, we've talked about that and then there's there's one song on the ep that i wrote kind of post this and so that that kind of has its own meaning but um yes for sure I do wonder how many bands are going to come away uh, from 2020, early 2021, with a far more introspective take on their music than maybe previously, or just the opposite, where it's like, you know, I'm going to write about seemingly trivial kind of fun things that I used to do or remember, but I really think this whole thing is going to affect people's well, because you can't not be affected as a human being, but as a songwriter, yeah, you know. Definitely. I mean, that, that was kind of one of the main reasons we wanted to do this EP was like we, we had these songs that uh, we were excited about and we, we were initially almost considering, well, well the initial idea was we'll, we'll uh, have these songs for the next LP. You know, like we'll, <laughs> we're halfway there. <laughs> and then... Um, and then once all this happened, we were kind of like, where I personally was just like, I, it would be hard for me to imagine writing songs now after this pandemic and having them fit with songs that I wrote pre pan It just feels like they're from another time. So it's just like, we don't want these songs to fall by the wayside. We lo- we really are excited about them. We want people to hear them. So we put them out as an EP. But yeah, I mean, that definitely plays into it. And I've been writing a lot. It, it was hard at first. I think I, I spent like six months just writing music and, and kind of avoiding writing lyrics because I, I didn't want to write about like <laughs> the pandemic. It just felt like so, like nobody wants to hear about it. And then, you know, and then I was like, I, I think I want to write like just try and write like po- really positive music, you know, because I think, you know, if and when anything does come out, like that's what I'm going to want to be listening to. I don't want to, you know, I'm already depressed. Like I don't need, <laughs> you know, and that, there's a place for, for sad music or whatever. And, and I think some of my music that I've been writing. Oh, here's my kid. Oh, she's Hello. all muddy. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think my, my, I have my mother-in-law helping out here. She's nice. very nice. Um, yeah, I think some of my songs before us, but a lot of the stuff on the main thing was like pretty introspective and um, kind of like, questioning my whatever like life choices and you know in a in a positive way a negative way whatever but like definitely i think and yeah i've been writing a little more stream of consciousness and more like just yeah kind of trying to just think of images that are i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be happy or anything like that it's just it's just things that are yeah a little more normal i don't know have different meaning different meaning more normal yeah yeah i mean writing about like a squirrel (laughs) yeah, <laughs> like, we, we you know, use some, yeah. I think yeah. That it, it's like not every band obviously is a you know socio political uh, type of band, but then you think about music in the '60s that came out while people were living through civil rights, and certainly there were those people in the forefront singing about those important things. But then there was also like you know the Archies and you know yeah. crazy bands that were just still doing their thing. But we can get off the pan. Well, can we get off the pandemic? Let's try well, to get. Well, I mean, yeah, I would say also like stuff like that where, you know, the political things and I, it just, you have to really, I almost think so, it, you have to be in a certain phase of your life or like in a, in a, you have to have a certain mindset. Like it's, it would be hard for me to write the same songs that I wrote when I was 23 now, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, that's, your mind is in a different place and it's, so you end up writing about different things, but yeah. I mean, fatherhood as an example, that, that's that got to be a prolific change in some things if, in terms of what's important and what's less important. Definitely. And it, but then that, and that makes it, yeah, it makes it hard to write like just like more trivial so, or songs about, you know, so like a, for an exa- to use an example of a song that I wrote, you know, 12 years ago, like someone, you know, walking down the beach or whatever, just like really like kind of, you know, I mean, I thought that I was being you know, not necessarily profound, but at least there's some like, you know, <laughs> metaphor there. Um, I've always wanted my lyrics to, to not just mean nothing, but, um, but yeah, it's, it is, it's hard now to write about anything other than, I mean, that's, and that's, again, that's the challenge. Like, I don't want to just write about the pandemic. I don't want to just write about being a dad, but it can be, it can make its way in there. It just, mm-hmm. I don't like, 
you know, you don't want it to be too like uh, on the nose, I guess. Well, how many of your bandmates are in the same city? Is are you in Brooklyn right now? No, no, that's like it's funny. No, I'm I'm in. I live in um, like the Hudson Valley, up like kind of downstate, upstate, whatever in New York. Okay. Um, yeah, I moved up here like six years ago. So a lot of the, the Wikipedia it says like we're from Ridgewood, New Jersey, which is where I grew up. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> we're, it says we're like based in New Jersey or we're based in Brooklyn, and like <laughs> I, I'm actually the only one. Well, our new we so we have a new drummer, and she mm-hmm. lives kind of close to me. But uh, other than that, like two of us live in California and one of us lives in Wisconsin. So we're, we're all spread out now. You know, I, because it seems like when I was like, Oh good, I'm going to talk to real, I know I've interviewed you guys here and Mm -hmm. um, years ago, but you know, and it seems like all the questions I want to ask are like, you know, especially with this new EP, like what let's, so let's try to, think of when we come out on the other side of all of this, because we will, we know we will. Um, I want to know what type of venue do you think um, serves a live real estate show the very best? Uh, I mean, it, it, <laughs> we kind of ch- can, we, we will often change the, sh- the kind of type of set we would play kind of, we cater to the room sometimes. So like, I mean, I think, and I, I, it's so hard to like be choosy now because I just, I just want to play any show, but, um, like, it's really nice to play like a a big, beautiful old theater, you know, like it's, it's, those are nice. And, and we can sometimes, and those rooms can be kind of like big and boomy and the sound can be a little iffy. Like, so sometimes we'll play kind of the more open kind of jammy, songs that have you know less noisy a less noisy set kind of a softer set for rooms like that and then and uh if we find ourselves playing like a a rock club you know maybe we'll do a mixture of kind of because you know we like playing the soft stuff but we do have some some more like fun kind of like uh more rock songs so yeah um yeah i think we do we do best in like a medium-sized like not necessarily like a, bo- a box rock, cl- like a black box, you know, mm-hmm. like, but a, a room that has some character, like this place, the chapel in San Francisco springs to mind, which is like a really cool old converted chapel. And it looks, yeah. it's just, it's nice to have a little bit of, um, whatever, uh, aesthetic, you know, something to look at from the stage <laughs> and for the audience too. Like, I would think too, that the, um, the outdoor festival, a scene yeah. which is so completely different because again I don't know if you feel like your music it's like do, I mean do you feel like you have to just like push it because literally I, well you can literally see people's faces you're not in the dark usually sure. and there's a sense of like I don't know I mean maybe you get that wrapped first couple of rows of audience but I don't know if, how compelled you feel to like get the guy who's in the beer line you know well, yeah. I mean, it's funny because you mentioned you were like, you know, you said venue, and then it, the the thought of an outdoor show didn't even cross my mind. But I would say that actually is probably my favorite type of show to play. You know, late afternoon, you know, in a field somewhere, in a park, in a festival. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I I don't mind the people in the back that are you know sitting on blankets and maybe there's kids running around or maybe someone's going to get a beer or whatever. Like that's like that's the beauty of a show like that. It's like, you know, you've got the people that are paying attention, but it's nice to just, to just be playing music outside and kind of be providing the soundtrack for someone's, you know, nice afternoon. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't care if they're not paying attention, you know, like that's fine. Um, yeah. I love playing outside. You know, that's kind of, I do think we kind of shine in a setting like that. I feel like we're just talking about another lifetime, even though it was a year ago, but I mean, how much interaction do you do with your fans? I mean, a lot. We, ch- we try to, we try to, uh, you know, like, especially club shows or, or you know, n- non f- festivals are different. But anyway, like, yeah, definitely try to, like, after the show, come out and just hang out and talk to people. Because, again, that's that's kind of the, the beauty of of getting to do this, like, you know, the live music thing. It's like playing the show is really fun. Um but also kind of making those connections with people that are maybe, you know, like getting something out of our music, you know, and it's, it's kind of a gratifying experience, obviously on our end to, you know, meet people that come to our shows um, and, you know, 
and just to show kind of our appreciation for people coming out. Yeah. Yes, we do that a lot. Actually, we do <laughs> that. That's kind of a thing that we, we would do. And I'm sure a lot of bands do it too. Um, t- you know, try not to like, just go hide in the green room yeah. after the show. Um, yeah. I think um, with the everybody's circumstance being whatever form of kind of isolation, obviously you, you have your family with you, but in this time of, uh, I don't know, more time with yourself. Is there any sort of skill you've honed or anything like around the house you all of a sudden do a lot better because you've had a lot of practice at it? Do you make coffee better? <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. Me I've too. To <laughs> Try to give, yes, that that's one thing. And just, just kind of cooking in general, like mm-hmm. just I've kind of tried to like expand my repertoire there. Um, yeah. Uh, and just... I mean, honestly, even mu- music just kind of, I've gotten more, uh, like I've really upped my home recording game, <laughs> like kind of been gathering gear and just like getting really into, um, trying to make better sounding demos and stuff. And, and so, yeah, that, that's, that's another thing, but, um, just, and just, I think being, like a dad, I think it's, it's just been, it's been nice to be around, you know, more than I, I was definitely going to this year. And it's been in, in a way like, um, definitely a blessing to be able to spend all this time with my kids, uh, as in, in a very, they're, they're, I've got three kids that are very young. So it's nice to kind of like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I was going to be a gone, I was going to be gone a lot this year. So it's nice to not have to do that. <laughs> it's definitely like, as much as I love touring, that's, that's the major drawback. Which you know? one of your kids is uh, the most likely to start their own band? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, the, my oldest daughter is six and she has started, we got her like a, do you know what a Lug is? It's yeah. like these little three string guitars that she got one for Christmas uh, Santa brought it <laughs> and uh, she, um, she kind of like, it like kind of, it sat there for a while. And then in the, like the last couple months, she's, she's started messing around with it. And she's gotten really good. And she knows like a bunch of chords and now she's like playing songs and singing. And I'm like, Oh, this is like, and you know, now that I've kind of set up this studio in my house, I'm like trying to get into whatever, encouraging that and being like, let's, why don't you, cause she's all, she's always like, she has like a band band quote unquote with her cousins where they like write songs and write lyrics about yes. like whatever it's called sunny life <laughs> is her band. Love and, it. um, and so she, I was like, why don't, you know, you could, you could take these words that you've written and you could use these chords that you're learning and you could actually write songs like let's record some stuff, you know? And like, and my other younger, my younger daughters, it's just, you know, like just, yeah, try to include them in that. And, um, for sure. I mean, I also am like, I'm like torn to be like, uh, you know, do you, do I really want you to have the life of a musician, <laughs> you know, but no, I mean, I, they can do whatever they want. And, uh, and that, that would be very exciting to see just to hear. Like, I remember when, you know, my oldest kid was just a baby being like, one day you're going to be talking. I'm going to know what's going on in your head. And you know, like, and now it's like, you know, one day you could be making cool art and I could, you know, know, you know, I don't know. Like it's, it's really interesting to, to think about like seeing that side of, you know, your, your children. I think that um, if quarantine will, will prove anything, it's that uh, I think a lot of young kids are going to be more musical due to mm-hmm. an influence from their parents. And, and everyone seems to be a better baker. What's the deal with that? Why did everyone right. <laughs> start baking? I don't know what that was, but it was like, all of a sudden, every Instagram post was, I just baked this. And it's like, I, yeah. I guess it's satisfying. And My wife and I built a, a pizza oven in our, oh. our, like, ma- our like early COVID like mania. We Beautiful. like spent two months building a full-on pizza oven in the backyard. <sighs> uh, yes. Yeah. And it's, it actually works really well. And it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But, um, yes. Yeah. I don't know what that was all about. We, we, I definitely fell into it too. I was like making scones, like, yes, <laughs> like yes. making baguettes. Like I was like, <laughs> let's get the yeast out. Like, right. Yeah. Uh, kind of, that kind of like went away. We kind of, yeah. or at least, you know, maybe it'll come back. But when I well, think back on those first month or month or two, like, it's actually like not really fond memories. You're like, God, that was really dark. You know, like, like I it know. Was, but yeah. I know. It's like, funny. Just t- dealing with that isolation and anxiety through scones is yeah perfect. I feel so, like people are going to associate sourdough with like 
being depressed, you know, like <laughs> it's uh, possible. Yeah, it's um, possible. I just I'm so happy to talk to you and um with the with the new EP um a half a human I just I mean I don't even want to ask cuz I don't want you to be bummed but it's like so what's the plan I mean is there I mean can you even kind of I don't want to call it pie in the sky but can you throw a date out that you might be looking to perform uh well I mean we're you know we're there's like like not tours, but like possible like little shows here and there, like ha- maybe happening in the fall, like late September, maybe. But like, yeah, we're not. I mean, we're this EP. It's nice because there really weren't like major expectations for it. It was just fun. It was a really fun project to finish, mm-hmm. and it's nice to be able to put something out new for for like you know fans to hear. Um, but you know, we knew we weren't going to be touring uh, on it, and that so that's fine. And that was kind of the reason why it was like, we're not going to put all our energy into making another record right now. Cause like, I'm not, I don't want to put an album out in the spring and not be able to tour. Like, I don't want that. I don't want to do that again. Like put all that, that effort into making something and then not, and not be able to go all the way with it. So, um, yeah, we're talking about making another record, you know, I'm writing, uh, and hopefully by the time we were able to record and finish it and it comes out, that would we're looking at like maybe spring of next you know a year from now or or summer of next year and by then you know <laughs> i can only hope that we'll be able to tour properly and and so that's kind of and, you know and hopefully you know we we need to be able to play shows before then and we'll see what happens we're not we're not looking to book any like major headline tours before we have another record done but maybe we'll open for another band or maybe we'll just pick off some festivals if we can or whatever, some way of making some money and, and getting back out there would be nice. Yeah. So I'm talking to Martin from real estate and uh, the new EP, which is called half a human. Um, I thank you for taking the time to chat and to play and what songs you're going to play two more songs and which one are you going to do next? So, yeah, um, we, we did, we, we can do uh, stained glass next, which is from two albums back our last album that we were able to t- actually tour on pre uh, mind. Yeah. Pre scones. Um, yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was fun to, to, to kind of dust that song off for this session. So you'll, yeah, we'll, you can play that one.
89.3 The Current, I'm Mary Lucia, and you are listening and watching to Real Estate. And um, Martin, you're going to do one more tune. And again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and your family's day and your baking and your pizza oven and all the essential <laughs> things you need to do. Um, uh-huh. which, which song are you guys going to close here with? Um, well, th- thanks for having us as well. Uh, we're going to do um, Ribbon, which is the last song on the EP. So, fittingly enough. Thank you. 